How can you know God? How can anyone come to know God? If he dwells in light, unapproachable and full of glory, if we are full of darkness and ignorance, how is it possible to know him who to know is life eternal? Well, the writer to the Hebrews tells us that God at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. God was and is a God who makes himself known. And if you look back to the Old Testament, you've got this succession and progression that God, having spoken, continues to speak and to make known his glorious person and his saving purposes over time. But all those prophets were pointing forwards. And that's the point that the writer to the Hebrews wants to make, that while God has been speaking, that in these last days, God has spoken to us by his own son. This is the pinnacle of revelation. This is the highest, clearest, brightest and most glorious word that God might have spoken. He himself has come to us in the person of of his son. The God man is among us to make God known to us and to bring us to God. And so the writer to the Hebrews uses these wonderful phrases that the Lord Jesus Christ, the incarnate Son of God, is the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his person. He is the one in whom and from whom the glory of God shines forth in all its excellence. If you want to see the majesty of God, you must look at the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to trace the contours of God's character, you must consider the Lord Jesus Christ, because he is the express image of the person of God. The Lord forbade images as a way of worship. The Lord said you're not to make something as a mode of worshipping. You cannot represent God with something made with hands. It always falls short of the truth. But God has given us a true image. God has given us one in whom God can be seen and through whom God can be known. And that one, and there is only one, is our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. There, as it were, in his face, in his hands, in his words, you can see and hear who God is and what God is like. If you look within, you'll find nothing. If you look, if you will, across, you'll find nothing. But if you look up and out to God as he's made himself known in Jesus Christ, there you have uh, the the, the glory of God, the knowledge of the glory of God shining in the face of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's one of the reasons why we don't look for, look at or listen to anybody but the Lord Jesus. He is the final revelation of God. We have no need of any other prophet to reveal God to us, no need of any other priest to bring us to God, no need of any other king to rule over us on, uh, on, on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our king. He is our priest. He is our prophet. And when we come to him and when we consider him, there the glory and the goodness and the grace of our saving God shines forth. And so we should consider him. We should dwell upon him. We should come to God through him and by him. We should delight in him by whom God makes himself known. Eternal life comes in knowing God and God can be known only through his son, Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to God except by him. No one knows God without him. No one can lay hold of God apart from him. And this then is our glorious privilege that the one of whom the prophets spoke has now come and in him God is making himself known for salvation and for the glory of his eternal name.